tell me if this sounds familiar. Your nonprofit is about to launch a new program that you know is gonna help hundreds of people in your community. You are fired up, you're excited, you are staying up late thinking of cool new ideas to try for this program. But somehow your team doesn't seem quite as excited as you are. You can't really seem to get anyone motivated to take any action complete their tasks, or generally help move the program forward at all. And as a result, deadlines are at risk of not getting met and your own enthusiasm is kind of starting to wane, putting the whole program launch at risk. Motivating people to take action is like a top job of nonprofits and social impact organizations. If you want to tackle issues like hunger and poverty and education, people have got to rally and do things to move the issues forward. But inspiring and motivating people is also one of the hardest things to do on the planet. So how do you do it? Years ago, I started a nonprofit with the specific mission of mobilizing people to take action in my city, but it wasn't really until I read one of my favorite business and psychology books of all time, Switch by Chip and Dan Heath, that I realized some of the keys to mobilizing people to take action. So in this video, I'm gonna teach you three of my main takeaways from Switch that you can apply right now to step up your nonprofit management and leadership game. By the way, thank you so much to Bite Sized Books for sponsoring this video. I can't wait to share more about them later. They're super cool. And if we haven't met yet, I'm Amber Melanie Smith, nonprofit founder, social entrepreneur, and social impact YouTuber. Okay, let's get into these three things. In Switch, Chip and Dan Heath, co-authors and brothers, how cool is that, break down decades of research on human and organizational psychology to bring us the top lessons on what gets people to take real action. Personally, I believe that every nonprofit and social impact leader should read Switch because it really helps you apply lessons to how to create social change in your community and also internally in your own organizations. Now, Chip and Dan Heath aren't sponsoring this video, but if you happen to see this, guys, look me up. The very basic premise of this book is that people are both emotional and rational and that as leaders and managers, we have to appeal to both sides to motivate action. Let's go back to our earlier example. You are about to launch an exciting new program, at least it's exciting to you, and nobody in your team seems nearly as ready to take action as you are. So you get curious, you start asking around, and you learn that one of the reasons for your team's seeming lack of enthusiasm is a general fear that this new program just isn't going to work, that they're gonna spend all of this time and effort to get it going, and it's just gonna flop. So what do you do? you show them what's possible. Rather, you show their rational brains what's possible, and you do this by finding what the Heath brothers like to call bright spots. In the book Switch, bright spots are basically success stories that can be from your own organization or even organizations out there in the world doing similar work that provide valuable insights into what's already working. So to motivate your team, you first wanna become a bright spot detective. You wanna start asking around. Now you can start with your internal team. Maybe your team has feedback or knows people in your network who can share insights on what has been working for similar programs. In our example, who has already launched a program that might be like the one you're about to launch in another nonprofit, even in another city across the country. Or you can even zoom out and think more broadly to look at who has already solved the social or community problem that your program is going to aim to solve and in what ways. And most importantly, what are the factors that seem to be making these programs work where others might have failed? So now, once you have a bright spot success story or two or three, you can bring these to your team, addressing their rational and totally understandable fears. Armed with bright spots, you can speak to the side of their brain and say, see, it is possible. Speaking of bright spots, if you haven't subscribed to my weekly newsletter, Changemaker Mondays yet, 
you're gonna wanna take a second to do that. The link to do so is below this video. Every week in Changemaker Mondays, I share tips and strategies and even bright spots from other organizations so we can learn what's working as social impact leaders. Not to mention, I share funding opportunities, events for us to connect to each other and learn from each other and more. So don't forget to subscribe, the link is below. So you've appealed to your team's rational side by showing them the impact is possible through bright spots and success stories. But it's becoming increasingly clear that success is going to take a lot of work. It's going to take a lot of brain power, time, and energy, and you can just see your team's eyes glaze over with the complexity and how overwhelming it feels. So if you're gonna inspire them to even get started with the tasks required to get this new program or initiative off the ground, you're gonna to have to make the seemingly enormous project ahead of them feel a little less big and scary. Before, their rational brains were creating a sense of fear and cynicism because they didn't think the outcome was possible. But even if they see that the outcome is possible now, the emotional sides of their brains are just stalled and weighed down by the idea of how much work it's gonna take to get there. So you've got to shrink the change. In the book Switch, Shrinking the Change is all about breaking down the huge into small, manageable tasks or milestones so that getting done what needs to get done doesn't feel as impossible. Here's where you can show off those solid nonprofit management skills by plotting out the roadmap that includes the steps it's gonna take to launch that program or that fundraising campaign or that volunteer program or that startup or whatever it is that you're trying to do. In practice, you should actually be physically writing out the smaller milestones that need to be accomplished on that path to the end goal. That way, instead of telling your team, we need to launch this program, which sounds like a huge momentous task, you're instead saying this week, we need to do a community survey to get feedback about the program. Next week, we need to build a web page for the program. The next week after that, we need to develop a marketing strategy to get the word out about the program and so forth. Suddenly, the team sees that they just need to do one thing at a time, and they feel much better about accomplishing that bigger goal. Sometimes as nonprofit leaders, it can even feel hard to find the time to read books like Switch. Rationally, we even know that reading books like this can help us become top-notch nonprofit managers and leaders. But emotionally, that doesn't mean it feels any less daunting to pick up a book and read it from start to finish in any reasonable amount of time. That's why I wanted to thank so much this video's sponsor, Bite Sized Books, for making it easier for nonprofit and social impact leaders to digest lessons from some of the top books in business, fundraising, social impact, and more. Bite-sized books really shrinks the change for us by making it easier to absorb content from over 50 book summaries, books like Switch or Fundraising for Social Change or Brene Brown's Dare to Lead and so many more. Bite-sized books even helped me remember some of the key points from Switch so I could make this video here for you today. There's even an option for you to connect with other nonprofit and social impact leaders who are learning and digesting books just like you through Bite Sized Books member community. So you can chat with others to share your thoughts if that's your thing. I highly encourage you to give Bite Sized Books a try. Not only do they have a free trial, but you can use my special link, which is gonna be linked below this video to get a massive 40% discount on your subscription when you use the code Amber. Now back to our nonprofit management lessons. Okay, so now you've appealed to your team's rational side and emotional side, but there's still a little bit more work that needs to be done in order to create a situation where your team can take action successfully and easily. We might be the most motivated people in the world, but if our environment presents a lot of barriers to action, that could create unnecessary friction and demotivate us. So the third lesson from Switch is that we've got to shape the path. 
So what does that mean? Start with identifying any barriers in your environment, and this could be your literal physical workspace or environment, or things that are in your schedule, like routines or activities that could be getting in the way of achieving your outcome. I like to think of it like this. If I wanna be motivated to take a jog or go to the gym in the morning, I've gotta put out my running shoes the night before. It's just one less thing for me to have to think about or go hunt down in order for me to take that action. So just like motivating yourself to go to the gym, you wanna design and create an environment that makes it as easy as possible for your team to take the actions you want them to take. For example, if you want your team to collaborate better, you might consider creating some shared work environments or putting time on the calendar for collaboration. Or let's say you want to increase your donor engagement. You could create automated reminders that remind you and your team to send out, hello, how are you doing notes to your donors? Or you could even put a physical wall listing all your donors on your workspace so that you're reminded to think of those wonderful supporters all the time. Well, not all the time, but you get what I'm saying. Or maybe you need your team to turn in assignments in a more timely manner. One thing you could do is more visibly celebrate and thank those who are doing it successfully to model the behavior for others. There's so much more the book Switch can teach us as nonprofit and social impact leaders on how to inspire action, not just on our own teams, but also for our volunteers, our donors, our entire communities. If you're trying to create a movement for social change, but I hope that these three takeaways have sparked your imagination to get things started. So let me know what you think. Are you feeling ready and motivated to motivate your team? Share in the comments below. And don't forget, if you are working on starting or growing a nonprofit or social enterprise or social impact initiative of any kind, don't forget to subscribe to my newsletter, Changemaker Mondays. It's a weekly newsletter where I send out actionable strategies as well as funding resources, events, and opportunities for us as a Changemaker community, because we've got to stick together. The link is below the video to subscribe. Thanks as always for watching and I'll see you next time.